So in this video, we're going to refactor how our Firebase calls are being made and essentially create a new service class that we can put all of our Firebase calls in and then use those throughout our app. So for instance, if you look right now in the navigation view, we have this call down here to Firebase and that is going to be extracted into a class. If you go to our deposit view, we also have this other call to Firebase all these calls throughout our app are okay, but it could be better if this was just in one class that we can reuse. So the first thing we're going to do is create that new class and we'll do that in our services folder and this will be a Dart file. We're gonna call it the Firebase service. And let's just start with the navigation view. So we have this function here to get the next trip this is just going to get the current user's next trip based on the start date. Let's go ahead and actually just copy this whole thing and remove it from our navigation view and go into our Firebase service. We need to create this as a class first and this will be called our Firebase service. And then we can just paste in that get next trip. We're going to need to remove that underscore because we do want this to be accessible outside the class. And we're going to make this a static function. All that means is that you don't need an instance. You don't need to create an instance of this class to use it. You can see a few, there's a few issues here and they're all actually related to the imports. We do need to import our provider widget. And then we do need to import our core Firestore. And lastly, we need to import our trip model. Once we have those, you can see the only issue now is the context. So we're going to need to pass that context into the trip here. And this is the build context, so we'll get that from wherever we're actually calling this. So this get next trip, we can also define what is going to be returned here. So it is actually going to be a future, and it's going to be a future that is returning a type of trip though. This isn't 100% necessary to have, but it is kind of nice because it does tell you what you can expect to be returned from this. So now you can go back into the navigation view where we're getting the error about get next trip because this is no longer, or this is no longer defined within this navigation view widget. So instead we can call the get next trip with the context. Now get next trip needs to be called from the Firebase service. And since it's that static method, we can just call it right on the Firebase service without needing to create an instance of this Firebase service. So if you save that, everything should work exactly how it did before. And now we don't have that function down here. Uh, another little bit of cleanup, we can remove these unused imports on our navigation view. The navigation view will change slightly more as we rebuild this main page, but this cleans up at least that call a little bit. Uh, another area where we can add is the deposit view. We have that function right here, which is just adding that ledger item to the trip. Again, when we type in 25 and hit saved, it's going to add that 25 as a saved value. So this can also be extracted. We can copy this whole away part right here and go back into our Firebase service. And now we can create another static function here. This one is actually not gonna return anything because it's just going to update Firebase. So we're not gonna be expecting a trip from it. So that's why we're gonna use void here. And then we can call this add to ledger. And then go ahead and just paste everything we copied over. So this is going to be asynchronous, so add that asynchronous there. The context, similar to the last one, is going to need to be passed in. And then you can see there are also a few issues down here. We aren't going to have access to this widget.trip directly because the widget.trip is actually going to be part of the deposit view. So really, we just want to get the document ID, and we can pass that document ID in as a parameter, and then very similarly, this item here is just the formatted data that we're going to be using to update. So we can copy that and remove that. And then we'll just call this the item. And 
that should work, but then we need to actually add the item as a parameter here. So back in our deposit view, we're going to be able to call that Firebase service, and then we can call add to ledger. The context is the context, the document ID we need to define, but let's paste in this widget dot trip ledger item and the type. The document ID again is just going to be that widget dot trip dot document ID. And if you save this, you can see if we do 40 saved, it updates as expected and still works. So this is a little bit cleaner having this Firebase service and just being able to call and pass parameters into it. I'm not going to go through every specific example, but I think just by seeing those two examples right there, you kind of get the idea of what's going on here. It's really nothing more than extracting these Firebase functions out of our build code here and into this service class. This keeps it a little bit more manageable and a little bit easier to read in my opinion. So for instance, when I'm looking at my action button here, I don't have all that Firebase code clogging up this on pressed. It's just a simple call to Firebase service that I can add to the ledger. I think this helps with keeping Flutter code a little bit more concise in these build functions because these can get out of hand and get very nested with a lot of stuff going on in them. I'll personally be updating my app to move all my Firebase calls into these into this Firebase service and then just accessing them throughout the app. Uh, one last thing, I did change how the get current UID works and it no longer is a asynchronous function. If you go into the auth service, get current UID now just will return that UID as a string. This is now available with the new updates from Flutter. So if you're on the newer versions, you can do this. On the older versions, it was returned as a feature. So keep that in mind, but we no longer need that await there. Um, so that is, that is why that was underlined in gray. All right, that's gonna be it for this video. Hopefully this will help you refactor some of the Firebase code in your own app. Comment down below with any questions you have and subscribe to see more Flutter videos. All right, ciao for now. <laughs>